Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, King Edward Zero Old Grouch. Um, anyway, uh, we have here another episode of Ask Dave, and this uh, question comes from Ray Kashubowski, or Kashubowski, and he is K8RAY. Okay? And he sends me great detail about a vertical that he has built himself and uh, disguised it as a flagpole antenna. And uh, I commend you, Ray. That's great. And it sounds like it's working really well. Now, instead of attaching a regular full-size flag to it, he has attached uh, one of these little streamers you sometimes see. They're circular and they got red, white, and blue, and then little legs that are supposed to be the stripes. And he's put that up there on it. Um, and he asks, in putting that on there, did I affect the antenna? And the answer is no, not at all. Let's draw a picture of it here. He's got a vertical that's encased in uh, some plastic all the way up and he's got a little streamer hanging from here that's one of these red white and blue things okay and what he wants to know is this of course has uh, probably a plastic circle of some kind holding it out and the rest is made of nylon and rayon okay and this is a little wooden arm coming out he says will this affect my antenna and the answer is no not at all uh, it does not act as the top hat it doesn't add any capacitance or anything like that because all of this is made from non-metallic objects so from the point of view of the antenna it's an insulator now an insulator in the path of an antenna will create a tiny amount of, uh, it, it changes the impedance by some small amount um, because it's like insulation around the wire. It just changes the impedance. Not enough to worry about. Nothing to worry about. How much power is lost in that antenna, I would say milliwatts. Now let's take a look at another thing he's proposing to do. Here's his antenna. It's one quarter wavelength. Let's lambda. Um, that's not a, a wishbone right there. That's a lambda. Okay, he is wanting to take a somewhat larger um, piece here, a solid. Well, it's got piece of wire running down the middle of it so it's it's um, unbroken this thing here happens to be fed at the bottom I think I think he may have he describes the feed method in there uh, vertical is a vertical now he's going with this this is one quarter lambda plus 0 0.1 lambda so instead of 0.25 lambda it's going to be 0 0.35 lambda. And he's wondering if this will provide any directionality to the ensemble of antennas. And the answer is this is much too long. Um, it should be more like one quarter lambda uh, times um, 1 plus 0 0.1 um, lambda in lambda everything's in lambda in other words a little bit longer now he wants to make this one quarter wavelength okay go into <coughs> the yagi this is making a vertical yagi go into the yagi section of the antenna manual and look at this this is far too much spacing you'll probably want it somewhere over around in here and if you want, you can get some slightly shorter directors 
and put them out here. Well, you're saying, wait a minute, this is only half an antenna because uh, it's vertical. I go, yeah, right. A vertical is a quarter wave. Dipole is a half wave. The this, these verticals all act the same way. So you get the spacing in between them so that uh, they meet the eggy formulas and then you'll have nice directionality in this direction okay and the more you aim the beam the further it comes to the horizon the angle right there okay so look up what the length of a director should be at the frequency you intend to use it and put space in here from the various uh, design suggestions for Yagis. And that's a good start. A driven element and a reflector is a two element Yagi. And if you want at some point you can put up directors over here to get a little bit more beam width and again bring that uh, beam down a little bit so it, it's pretty low beam for good for DX. All right. So that will work. The only element that is driven is this one. Do these need to be grounded? Well, I would think yes. Uh, you want to somehow tie them into the ground plane because remember, this is only half an antenna. And so I would ground these down here. Of course, this one right here is fed right at ground. Uh, so you can play with that and see what works. And I will be for one, very interested. So you can play with that and see what works. And I, for one, will be very interested in how this comes out because it's an easy way to put up an antenna in your backyard that's uh, directional. One problem, of course, is it's only directional in one direction. A little hard to, um, to rotate this kind of an antenna. That's why Yagis are almost always uh, horizontal and they've got a center point here where there's a mast coming down and a rotator there and you rotate the whole antenna the whole kit and caboodle so there you go so um, Ray I hope you find this helpful and I think you're having some good success with your antenna and good luck with your experiments keep us advised so there you have it. Now, for those who would like to help support this channel financially, you certainly may do so by going to decastlercom slash support. Pick a way that works for you. And please be sure to subscribe and click like, and also tell others about this channel. Forward the URL of the videos you like to your friends. And until we next meet, 73.